Well, it's something that I've done for several years. It's just always something I've wanted to do. Introduce our talented Vancouver musicians to the cream of the crop New York musicians and vice versa. That's the whole goal. I uh, actually preferred playing uh, in this format, a, a little bit of a smaller band than a normal big band. The normal big band can get sometimes, not always, but sometimes a little unwieldy. It's more of a, um, more like a, a chamber ensemble. Uh, we can play a little more subtle, get more of a blend in a way and not have to play so loud. The over, well, the overall sound is good because the music was, was written very well. I mean, everything is there for us to use to express ourselves. It's, it's really fantastic. This ensemble felt like a small group. With an 11-piece band of jazz musicians, what we were able to achieve was a small group feel with a large group um, sound. This is really special in that uh, we have kind of an um, unusual mix of American and Canadian musicians in this little big band. The playing is at a very high level and uh, always swinging. And the music is also really beautifully written. Jill Townsend and Bill Kuhn have uh, really stepped up and, and uh, written some beautiful arrangements. There were two records that I loved, Gene Ammons' Late Hour Special and the Eddie Locke, John Davis Big Band. And when I heard those two records, I said, I want to do that. I was amazed to flip over the record and see that it was only 10 and 11 pieces. And so I immediately went to Bill and Jill and I said, look, this is what I want. If you think you can do it, fantastic. If not, then, you know, I want to abort the mission right now. From the second we started rehearsing this music, I knew they got it. I'm like, you knew exactly what I was talking about. And that was another thing around putting together the strongest possible players. You know, Gary Simulian plays in every big man known. Steve Davis, same thing. Same with Joe Magnarelli. Just look at their resumes, and they're used to playing in big ensembles, so they get it. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Corey has done a great deal um, of, of partnering with uh, uh, fellow New York musicians and kind of pulling the Vancouver cats with the New York uh, cats together. And I, mean, I guess I met him in New York and I was impressed with his playing. And then, of course, as the years went on, he brought me to the cellar a few times. And then we did some stuff in New York together. Of course, he had his club, uh, the jazz cellar for many years and then cellar live records and uh, but you know Corey's a, a, a great player he's a great tenor player and, and just a like-minded uh, comrade you know uh, for all of us to to work with so it's it's natural but but he's also very uh, industrious and entrepreneurial and very generous I've watched him grow and mature as a, as a saxophone player, and he claims to get nervous when I'm around, but it certainly didn't show on this recording date. He played beautifully and hired 10 of the best uh, backup musicians that I think he could have gotten his hands on. I, I think we view Corey as uh, somewhat of a uh, an ambassador for jazz music. Coming out to Vancouver, yeah, it's a long way, but it's totally worth it. And once you get here, the city's so beautiful, and the people are, yeah, just a, it's a beautiful scene. I love being here. We 
we open things up at the gigs. So when we were at the live gigs uh, previous to this recording, I'm looking around at Steve and Joe and Gary and PJ, looking around at all the Vancouver guys playing and being really into it. And then on the car ride back to the hotel, having Steve tell me that, yeah, man, Paul really plays his butt off. And, yeah, man, Jesse Cahill's really dealing it. Yeah, man, Chris, tell me more about Chris Gestrin. And that's what I want to do because I grew up in this community. These are my people. These are my friends. And I want to introduce them. I don't have visions of, of them becoming a part of those guys' band. That's not what it's about. It's about making beautiful music in the moment and having these guys come out of their comfort zone of their own bands and coming and playing with new people and having Vancouver get to experience what it's like to play with New York musicians. Everybody is a little bit out of their comfort zone and the audience thrives on music that's out of the comfort zone because it's exciting, it's new, it's unpredictable.